let us go into one by one details into the different processes that means different requirements different steps as i have told you earlier deoxidation is the first and most important requirement in secondary refining now let us try to understand how deoxidation takes place deoxidation the name implies that oxygen has to be brought down so now what is the reaction this is the basic m stands for the deoxidant the metal the element which is used as deoxidant and oxygen is dissolved oxygen in liquid state this third bracket in incidentally all of you possibly know means that this m and this o that means this deoxidant and the oxygen these are in liquid still and the first bracket indicates this constituent will be generated first and then first bracket indicates it should go to the slag that means it is a slag constituent so the reaction is mx plus oxygen into y will find get you a deoxidant like mx oy when we are deoxidizing with aluminum that means the product is al2o3 so x is 2 y is 3 so two aluminum reacting with three atoms of that means two atoms of aluminum reacting with three atoms of oxygen giving rise to al2o3 the molecule al2o3 so as i was telling you m can be any deoxidizer it can be manganese it can be silicon it can be aluminum it can be calcium these are the you know common deoxidizer which can be used in liquid steel for taking care of oxygen so what is the product what is the deoxidation product if we are using manganese it is manganese oxide if we are doing using silicon it is sio2 if we are using aluminum i have told you l2o3 if you are using calcium it is calcium oxide sometimes you know the two elements also can be used like manganese silicon if you do it can be manganese oxide and sio2 combination if you are using aluminum and calcium it is a combination of alumina and co so depending upon what is m that means which deoxidizer we are using for killing the steel we get the product which is known as deoxidation product now if you look at this reaction the deoxidation product if you assume that it is a pure oxide say alu alumina when it is forming it is not reacting with anything that means it is pure alumina either in liquid steel and finally it will go to the slag so the activity of this oxide we can take it as one and since the element m and the oxygen in liquid steel these are very low in content we know from basic thermodynamics that if you assume henry's law for dilute solution then this h is the activity which can be taken as equal to weight percent because it is very very low much less than 1 weight percent so the equilibrium constant for this reaction km dash what is it activity of the oxide divided by the activity of the metal multiplied by the activity of oxygen of course depending on uh, you know the reaction that means how many atoms are reacting with how many atoms of oxygen the x and y will depend so now as i have told you this amo can be assumed to be one and hm and ho that means the activities of the particular deoxidant for example say aluminum let us take and the activity of oxygen in liquid steel since these are very present in very small amount assuming henry's law for dilute solution these are activities of these elements can be taken as equal to their weight percent so finally what this reaction finally goes into that the weight percent of that metal to the power x into weight percent of oxygen to the power y equal to 1 divided by km dash so if it this is taken as km 
this can be taken as the deoxidation constant. So, one important relationship is emerging from this that that wet percent of the deoxidant in liquid steel and the wet percentage of oxygen in liquid steel after the deoxidation reaction when they are in equilibrium they are multiplication that means wet percentage of the deoxidant in liquid steel and the wet percentage of oxygen in liquid steel equal to a constant. We have to keep in mind that means whenever we are increasing the amount of deoxidant in liquid steel, we are decreasing the amount of oxygen in liquid steel. So, that means for good deoxidation we have to add some larger amount of this m. Now, this w m and w o the multiplication of this is constant I have told you. Now, if you want to look into what is this constant? What are the values of this constant? That will give an indication how good is the deoxidant. So, let us go into the concept called relative deoxidation ability. Why do we tell that aluminum is a good deoxidant? Manganese is not a good oxidant, silicon is a moderate deoxidant, calcium is also a good deoxidant. Why do we tell? What are the quantitative figures? How can we be sure? Yes. Let us go into this aspect now. I have told you that wet percent of the metal to the power x into wet percentage of oxygen, this, this metal m is a deoxidant and oxygen is oxygen present as element dissolved oxygen in liquid steel. So, x m to the power x and o to the power y is constant. So, at and this constant of course, since there is an equilibrium term is dependent on the free energy of the reaction, this is dependent on the temperature. So, let us assume the temperature of liquid steel is 1600 centigrade which is a quite a reasonable assumption. So, at 1600 degree centigrade we can find out the values of K from the oxidation reactions and the K for the different oxidizers. I am giving you some rough estimate of this K for different deoxidizers. For manganese it is 0 0.2 to 0 0.3, for silicon it is 2 into 10 to the power minus 5, it is aluminum it is much lower you just look at the value. Approximately I am giving the approximate 3 into 10 to the power minus 14, some people call it 2 into 10 to the power minus 14, some people call give it the value of 5 into 10 to the power minus 14. Look at calcium 10 to the power minus 12. So, can you make out that manganese the value is high silicon value is lower than that, aluminum and calcium much lower than these values. So, what does it signify? If you look at what is K m, weight percent of m and weight percent of O. That means, if these values K m values are low, that means, this multiplication also will be low. That means, to get the same level of weight percent oxygen in liquid steel, say we want 5 ppm in liquid steel or 10 ppm in liquid steel, the weight percentage of the deoxidant will be much more for manganese, slightly less in silicon and much less for aluminum and calcium. Please try to remember that this equation, this reaction from the oxidation reaction we can come out with this understanding that K value that means the deoxidation constant for the common deoxidizer isers at a reasonable temperature say 1600 degree centigrade. If the temperature changes, the values will also change. But let us talk about say any particular temperature say 1600 degree centigrade. The values are given like this manganese around 0.25 say, silicon 2 into 10 to the power minus 5, aluminum 3 into 10 to the power minus 14, calcium around 10 to the power minus 12. So, that means using the same amount of deoxidizer that means, if the amount of m is fixed, if the value of k m is low that means, soluble oxygen also will be low. So, from this relation we can tell that soluble oxygen will be very low for calcium and aluminum, will be moderate for silicon, but high for manganese. 
So, we can tell that calcium and aluminum are very potent deoxidizers, very good deoxidizers. They will bring down the equilibrium oxygen content in liquid steel to very low level unlike manganese. Manganese you cannot get very low amount of liquid a uh, low amount of dissolved oxygen in liquid steel. It will be very high may be more than 100 ppm may be 150 ppm. So, manganese deoxidation is not very effective with silicon it is better than manganese may be you can get 40 ppm. Okay. But for aluminum and calcium you can get a value of less than 5 ppm these all can be calculated using this particular relationship at a particular temperature. So, we know that what is the criteria for using deoxidation which deoxidant is better it depends on the reaction of deoxidation reaction as I have told you this is the deoxidation reaction m is the deoxidant oxygen reacting with oxygen finally, giving rise to the m x o y type of oxide depending on the deoxidant it will the deoxidation product is decided. If it is aluminum it is L 2 O 3, if it is silicon it is SiO 2, it is calcium it is CaO. So, from this equilibrium constants I have shown that weight percentage of the metal to the power x into weight percentage of oxygen in equilibrium in liquid steel to the power y is a constant and this constant depends only on the temperature and nothing else. So, at a particular temperature using this relationship we can find out what amount of particular deoxidant will give rise to what amount of oxygen after deoxidation at equilibrium. So, we can know that what are the deoxidants and how much do you get after deoxidation what is the amount of oxygen. Now, I have talked about the deoxidation process how deoxidation take place. Now, let us know in reality what are the stages, how does deoxidation take place, what are the steps. We talk about deoxidation there are different stages we should know all the stages then only we should understand what are the implications, how it can be facilitated, how it can be enhanced, how it can be more effective. So, as I have told you how are, how are we doing deoxidation doing? We are adding the deoxidizer in liquid steel. For example, let us tell we are adding aluminum in liquid steel. How do we add aluminum? We are adding, adding aluminum element, we are adding silicon or ferrosilicon in liquid steel. So, first that, that has to be added in the form of small particles, small you know it, the smaller it is better it is it will be faster going into the solution. So, after we add it there is dissolution of the deoxidizer in liquid steel. So, first we add then this gets into solution in the liquid steel. So, this silicon or say aluminum or calcium when you are adding it is going into solubility of liquid steel. So, oxygen is there in liquid steel that particular deoxidizer also goes into liquid steel. So, then the chemical reaction will take place between dissolved oxygen and dissolved aluminum or dissolved silicon or dissolved calcium. The reaction of what how the reaction takes place I have already mentioned to you in earlier uh, slides. So, after adding and dissolution next stage is chemical reaction between dissolved oxygen and dissolved aluminum. So, finally, what happens what is the reaction product if it is aluminum it is alumina. So, alumina will be nucleated and there is some inclusion growth of these alumina particles initial growth of these alumina particles. The first there is an equation of alumina and there is initial growth of these alumina particles. So, these three steps take place very fast may be within 2 or 3 minutes all these stages are over. So, you know at this stage what is the situation we have added aluminum aluminum has uh, you know got into solution of liquid steel this aluminum in liquid steel is reacting with aluminum in oxygen 
producing alumina. So, in the process what is happening? The dissolved oxygen and dissolved aluminum have come down because of the reaction, but the product alumina they are in initially they are in the liquid steel, they have nucleated, they have slightly grown to some extent, but this amount is very high alumina. So, from the cleanliness point of view we have taken care of dissolved oxygen by using aluminum, dissolved aluminum, but there is alumina still in liquid steel which is the alumina particles which is a deoxidation product. This has to be removed. So, removal of alumina from liquid steel is necessary to enhance oxide cleanliness and then thereby reducing total oxygen. What is total oxygen? I have told you total oxygen is a combination of dissolved oxygen and oxygen present as oxide inclusion. So, by deoxidation by the process of deoxidation we have taken care of we have reduced dissolved oxygen, but the deoxidation product which is alumina it has aluminum as combined oxygen. So, the total oxygen is still high. So, this alumina now has to be removed from liquid steel to the slag. So, then only we can enhance the inclusion, enhance the cleanliness by removing the inclusion alumina. So, in the process reducing total oxygen. So, how it can be done? This further growth of alumina by agglomeration, it now this whatever alumina particles have formed, they will try to agglomerate, they will float up and subsequently they will be absorbed by the basic slag, but this takes time. As I was telling you addition of aluminum solubility, solubility of uh, the, uh, that aluminum getting into solution and then reaction of soluble aluminum and soluble oxygen is very fast, but growth of alumina they are floating up, they are subsequent absorption by basic slag, they are all these stages are time taking and these are the rate controlling steps. So, we have to be careful how we have to get or how we have to enhance these stages.